Hi, I'm Vivin Arana. I've been doing iOS development for last 12 years or so and worked with every single operating system and have made a lot of tutorials on these. And now we have iOS 14. It will be out soon in the public and we would want to make sure that we know all the features that are available and what all we can use in our app and have our app ready for production. So iOS 14 preview shows a lot of cool new things that uh, are out like for example the app clips which has subset of your app main app outside so users can actually look at the app clip and see what all features you have and then accordingly download the app if they want to or just use it for trial version or maybe more like to understand how your app can help them or just use for a quick use like for example uh, while checking into an airplane or while buying groceries or different places uh, at the same time we have widgets which can be available in different sizes which can give updates to the user based on what they're doing uh, and we have a lot of new features we have app libraries that are available and we'll be looking mostly on the app clips and widgets because they are pretty new and they have a lot of things to offer there's a lot of different things that are available you can look at the look at their website here and then see what all different tools are available for you and what you want to add to your application for your um, for, for your for downloading the tools uh, what you have to do is you have to go to apple developer tools click on download tools you have export 12 beta 5 currently today is august 23rd and that's what is available right now and soon we will have a better version available and finally the production version available soon i'm going to download it from here it's going to take some time so relax and sit back so once the xcode download is complete just go to where you downloaded it unzip the folder it will try to verify if you have enough space or the zip is properly downloaded so give it a couple of minutes so we'll try to unzip the zip file so once the xcode is completely unarchived it will kind of have the xcode beta version here and you can move it anywhere you want i probably want to move it in applications but it's up to you where you want to do it and then once you have it at a place where you have it you just go and click on it and it should open and it will it will take a little bit time the first time you open it it will ask you to install some additional components which belong to xcode 12 so i'll go ahead and do that So once the components are installed, Xcode is available. So once it's installed, you can go ahead and create a new project. And you'll see there's not much difference in Xcode, but the way like if I go to app and you'll see nothing new here, but if I go next, you'll probably see we have a lifecycle which has UI kit and it should also have, if you select Swift UI, it will have Swift UI app lifecycle and swift so the only difference between that is let me just go ahead and do a storyboard uh, i'll call it old app and select the things and select the test next save it to my desktop okay and once it's there you'll probably see the project open the project you'll see the same thing that we had before in 11 scene app but if you do a new project with swift ui and swift ui lifecycle then save it here what you will see is there is not much code here whatever is not required is all gone from here can get rid of the canvas right now but if you'll see that you have just your app which actually creates a swift app app from apps app uh, inherited from app and then just say that create a window group and show content view inside it which is nothing but hello world on top of it so it keeps it pretty simple and easy uh, than what we had so many methods before so uh, populating all those methods before which we would get rid of anyways because we would not use them so that's what this does there's uh, all the assets preview our content assets products same things that before if you look at this 
not, not much has changed if you are familiar with the previous version you know what we are doing here so that's that's how you get your system set up have your uh, uh, app simulators available and then we'll look at how to use widgets and lifecycle uh, in the next section now to look the widgets let's see how we can create some of these widgets you can actually go to the human interface guide at apple developer and then see what all things you can do what all you can add the different sizes small medium and large size widgets available that you can create or customize to do that uh, they look like if i open the simulator and if you go you'll have small medium and large size simulators uh, widgets available in the simulator i can actually click on one and then move it to my home screen and it will stay there if you have ios 14 installed on your device you'll probably see that you can also download it from uh, the developer portal and have installed on your device so let's see how we create a, these widgets so i can go to my xcode create a new project so i call it my custom widget you can keep everything as it is because it's actually going to create a separate uh, separate target for it so to create widgets let's get rid of these things so i have this hello world project if i run it on my iphone 11 which i have already running it looks like an iphone 11 app which will actually have hello world displayed right in the center it's still loading okay just close this message here and close this and if you try to add a widget let's say if you go to your widget screen and say i want to edit my widget screen and i want to add a widget you'll probably see some options i've created this test app before with widgets and then other options that you have with photos if i want to add photos i can add this widget so users can actually add it to their main screen here and then drag it to their home screen so let's see how do we create this so first what you do is create a new target and do this I find new target and search for widget that's at the bottom widget extension next and i'm going to call it my widget and say finish make sure you uncheck the include custom widget widget configuration or else it will create more options for you which we don't want to cover right now which is more advanced section i'll go and activate this again let me show you file new target and when you click on this widget extension it will give you this include configuration intent this will give you more options and you can customize your or have a configuration set for your widget so i'm going to go here and go back to my widget here which i just created and you see here it's going to create everything and the custom widget will be created for you which will have display you the date uh, that's what it does this is a simple entry date look at the placeholder it will take your placeholder date object it will create a snapshot for you uh, it will create uh, it will create a function get timeline where it is in this case it's consisting of five entries in r apart so every uh, few every few in an r it will make five entries so um, that's what it will update right now to the current date and kind of update the update your update your widget you can set it however you want whenever you want how many times you want like for example weather widget probably can have it update every minute or every five minutes your news widgets can be something similar so depending on how you want it you can set it so if i run this widget extension here select your widget extension iphone 11 run it it's going to create widget as soon as it builds and runs you'll see the widget my custom widget actually showing up here i can click on it uh, edit it on the home screen and move it around if i want it in the next page i can move it there so i can do a bunch of things with it but right now it's just showing me the time so if i want to add more customization to it if you see here at the bottom what we have is uh, right around sorry uh, this this is the widget creation and uh, right around over here my widget entry view which has the view creation so if you want to add more things to it for example since it's only one i'm going to comment it out create a v stack i'm going to get some resources i'm going to actually display a clock so inside my assets i'm going to drag in a couple of 
systems that are downloaded. One is for background, one is just a clock PNG image. I'm going to go back here and I'm going to say I want to create a VStack and I want to use the background image as the background. So I'm going to say image as for background. Now if I run this it will probably take over, I mean try to fill the scale based on the image. So I'm going to just say spect ratio fit and if I just run this right now, I'll have the image set up as a background for my for my custom widget. So I'm gonna run it and and there you'll see. Now you can set it to fit or fill however I want it. I do fill, probably fill over the entire space that I have. There you go, it looks better. Now inside that, let me create another V stack and in that I can say that I want this. I can add multiple things. I can say I want this text, say example, my or current time, and I want to display the image of a clock below it. Then I can just say clock, even this one. I'm going to say content, Oops. say resizable and aspect ratio fit this time run it and I'll have current time this entry uh, the current date that it displays and the clock below it now if you look at it it's pushing everything below here and displaying it even though I said oh I said V stack instead of Z stack I want image in the background and V stack on top of it so And there you go. So I have this options if I want to give some spaces. Of course, you probably know about spacers. You can give spaces. So I have some padding around it, or I, you can give also padding to it. So it's aligned properly. And now I have my widget available with some space up and down and have my current time 506. So this is how you can create your custom widgets, give your own view. That this you're probably familiar with. Swift UI. If you're not, we'll probably have some videos in future or already have it in my playlist. So check them out. But this is how you can create your custom widget for your app. Another good feature in iOS 14 is App Clips. App Clips has a page here in the developer portal which will show you how it is used. It can be part of an app which the user doesn't have installed or can be a part which might be overlaying over something else. Uh, it's it's you can download the full app or you can just download the partial app and use it just for whatever it whatever functionality it provides so a lot of different apps can provide this functionality but the problem is the size the 10 mb is the maximum limit that you can have on app clip but if you're doing something more than 10 mb then of course you need an entire app so that's why app clips are helpful and let's see how we can build one so let's say start with the project call it app clips project swept UI everything is fine let's create my project and once I have my project what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say let's actually run this app just to see how it looks like I'm gonna say hello world and this is a full app so I'm gonna say hello world complete app and I run it on my device on 11 simulator run it open up in the simulator and it should say hello world complete app so i can have my complete app installed on my simulator as soon as it loads up hello world complete app that's what it says and you'll probably see the app stored here i can just go back remove app delete app delete stops i'm going to create a new target file new target to create an app clip first let's search for it way too many things app clip call it uh, app clip or I'm gonna call it partial app since my project name is app clip itself so I'm gonna call it partial app and finish so finish it I'll activate it creates a separate target here inside this target now uh, if you look at it it has everything similar it has its own app file it has its own content view so I'm gonna call it partial app 
and then just run that partial app instead of the entire app it's gonna go and open up my partial app and you'll see hello world partial app if you look at it it doesn't actually install the app it just shows a clip and you can just access that clip and it should be less than 10 mb as i mentioned before so that's how you can build a app clip quickly now so what if i want to share some files between this project and and my app like you don't want to write the same code over and over again and that's what apple recommends don't repeat yourself don't write the same code over and over again so if i just want to create one file and access it for example create a swift ui view and i'll call it common view create it now once i created it i forgot to add it to both the pro both the targets so i can go here and i say create it for both the target usually you would probably when you create a file and you say next you can set it over here saying that i want it to use for both the targets but anyways since i showed you another way you can go here go to properties and you'll see you can set that here now in this particular view what i'm going to do is i'm going to have let's keep this text i'm going to call it common view which is common for both of them now this is common view i'm going to use this in my let's create a e stack and use this plus my common view and run this project now this is a complete app so if i write in complete app and run it with the app and since this is not part of my app clip it will not be displayed there so if you see it's there in the complete app but if i have a partial app or the app clip it will not show that here now if i want to use that here i can just since it's part of both the targets i can always do this here okay, on this partial app and i should see that in my partial app too so this is how you can use a same code file in both the projects but what if you want to display something different and different like i can say i want to say common full view do you want to do a functionality which is uh, more common in the com like um, i would say something that you want to do in your app versus in partial app or in the app clip you want to do something less so i'm going to say clip view so what if you want to do something different in different parts so what you can do is you can go to your project and select your partial app go to your build settings move down to let's say swift compiling swift compiler custom flags and here double click on this add app clip to it same here let's add a flag app clip something like that and now in my project i can say this is how you can add debugger flags if app clip then do this else with the thing i want to do this and of course in this particular format you also have to do end if so the problem here is if it's app clip i'm saying full so just up here so i'm going to fix this run this and if you see for app clip we have common app clip view whereas for the full complete project it will use that so this is how you can use a single class between common between two of them and then accordingly display whatever information you want if you want to use different libraries and things you can do that and display so this will be quite helpful and the nice functionality that Apple has provided, which you can use in your project. If you like this video and uh, you'd want to support us and want more from us for iOS 14 and similar projects, uh, just uh, leave your comments below and also subscribe and like this video, so which will help us to support uh, and create more uh, more videos.